Muy buenos días, amables amigos y hermanos. Good morning, kind Presentes. friends and brethren present, and all those who are in different nations, ministers, and churches, brethren from all countries. May the blessings of Christ, the angel of the covenant, be upon all of you and also upon me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. On this occasion, I wish a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to everyone present and those who are in other nations. For this occasion, let's read and say Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 to 14. And the scripture tells us the following. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences, in other words, diseases. Famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. May God bless our souls with his word and allow us to understand it. You may be seated if you are so kind. Taking verse 13 and 14, which says, But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Persevering until the end is our subject for this occasion. Persevering, persisting, 
to persevere is to persist, persisting, enduring until the end, for which the person must know why for which the person must know why he is persevering why he is persevering what the goal is he persists he is perseverant because he has a goal so he needs to know why he is going to persevere why he is going to persist what the goal is and therefore therefore what goal he has what he wants to get to what he wants to achieve a person can't be perseverant unless he knows what he is going to achieve for example why do people work because they have a goal to earn money they don't work without a goal and those who work voluntarily work for a goal a goal of the person and those who work voluntarily there must always be a goal that a person is doing something for for example why do you eat because there's a goal not only because of hunger but of the goal of feeding the body to preserve life if you stop eating you get weak become sick and die but we all want to live that is the goal that is why we work and eat and sleep and now we must know what we are trying to achieve And then have faith. Have faith that you're going to reach that goal, that you're going to achieve it. And that makes you perseverant. It makes you persistent because you believe that you're going to achieve it it's like young people they go to university because they have a goal they have the goal to obtain a career a profession whether a doctor lawyer accountant or whatever it may be and if the person has the goal to become a doctor and he likes biology and all these things he persists he believes that he is going to achieve it he keeps fighting until he achieves it but whoever loses faith halfway during his studies and says I'm not going to accomplish that career anymore what happens he quits the studies that lead him to the medical field 
and he takes on another career or leaves university because he took his eyes off the goal that he wanted to reach. He lost faith and therefore he stopped persisting. He stopped persevering in what he was doing. Believers in Christ have been taught by Christ that he who endures until the end, the same shall be saved. Therefore, therefore the person must always persist. He must be persevering in the Lord all the time, believing in the Lord, without turning away from him, keeping their faith in Christ, knowing that we will achieve living eternally with Christ in his kingdom. If he takes his eyes off the goal, what happens? He loses his faith. What can we do so that we don't lose our faith and therefore don't take our eyes off the goal? Which is the important thing? Faith comes by hearing the word. That is around Romans chapter 10. And the scripture also says, As your faith grows, faith grows. That is why Christ says, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible. And if one can do so much with such a small faith, how much more so if that faith grows? Faith like a mustard seed. You sow the mustard seed, and then that mustard seed grows in the form of a plant and brings forth much fruit. That is how faith is. It will bring forth much fruit as your faith continues to grow and you continue to fix your eyes on the promises that God has for the believers in Him. And you continue to obtain the fulfillment of those promises. Another thing that is important is to know which are the promises that God has made for the time in which a person is living. And to endure, to persevere, and work until you obtain the fulfillment of what you want to achieve. That is how it is with studying. That is how it is with everything in the earthly life. Therefore, it is important to know what the person's goal is when he receives Christ as Savior. We know it is eternal life. He receives spiritual eternal life first, and then in the resurrection of the dead in Christ, he will receive physical eternal life in an immortal glorified body. And those who are alive, who have persevered, who have persisted with their eyes fixed on the goal, will be transformed. And thus they will have conquered the promise of the living in Christ who will be transformed. And if he departed 
Well, he will have conquered the promise of the dead in Christ who will be resurrected in glorified bodies. That is how it is for individuals as well as for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ as a mystical body of believers. The Lord Jesus Christ answering the questions he was asked. Three questions in one. The disciples were like us. We have many questions and we say, I want to ask you a question. And when they ask us a question, there are, when they ask us a question, there are like 10 questions within that same question, 10 questions in one. And there they ask him three questions in one. Three questions in the question about the coming of the Lord and about the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. The scripture also said in the book of Daniel, chapter 9, in Daniel chapter 9, that the temple would be destroyed after the death of the Messiah. After the death of the Messiah, a certain time would pass and the temple and the city would be destroyed. And now... It is important for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ to know which are the divine promises relevant to the time of the stage that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is going through and also which are the problems mentioned that the church will go through. They are already prophesied. Therefore, what is seen is the fulfillment of what was prophesied by Jesus, the apostles, and also the prophets of the Old Covenant of the Old Testament. Therefore, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ which is the church of the new covenant, must know in each time, as time goes by, as centuries pass by, she must know in which time in the divine program she is living. Lest anyone come up with the idea to build an ark and say that they will be saved in that ark because that was for the time of Noah. One has to know which is the divine program for the time in which the church is living. And the believers in Christ must be aware of that time. They wanted to know when the destruction of Jerusalem of the temple would be. He explained to them, when you see Jerusalem compassed with armies, that is the time. There he gave them the sign of what was going to happen. And he says to the disciples, when you see that, let whoever is in Judea and Jerusalem in the city leave Judea. In other words, go to another city because the time for the destruction has come. When the disciples who were believers in Christ during the time of the destruction of the temple and of the city in the year 70 of the Christian era saw Jerusalem surrounded by the Roman army led by Titus Vespasianus, they remembered the prophecy of Christ and left the city. 
The people who stayed in the city said or thought, God's temple is here. God's presence is here. God will take care of us. But no, he didn't take care of them. Those who stayed behind the city were wounded. Thousands were crucified and put along the walls of the city because the time for the destruction had come, because they knew not the time of God's visitation in Jesus. And then, later on, came the divine judgment that Christ himself spoke because when God brings something for the people and the people receive it, they receive the blessing that comes within what God sent to the people. That is in the words of Jesus when he says, he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet receives a prophet's reward. In other words, he receives the benefit for which God has sent that prophet. And he who rejects the blessing that God sends has nothing left but the divine judgment. That is why Christ said, Because you knew not the time of your visitation, days shall come upon you when your enemies shall cast a trench around you and kill your children. That's around there, around St. Luke, chapter 19. Notice the promise of the coming of the Lord was being fulfilled there. God's visitation in a body of flesh. St. Luke chapter 19, verse 41 and on says, This was in the triumphal entry of Christ into Jerusalem. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hadst known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the day shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee in on every side and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. The person has to know what God has promised for the time in which he is living. And the church as a mystical body of believers has to know the time. Be aware of which time he is living in and which are the promises for that time. Because if he doesn't know it, he will overlook those promises being fulfilled and he will not even see them. Instead, he will attack the fulfillment of those promises. He will blaspheme against them and persecute the believers who have seen the fulfillment of those promises. Like it happened in the time of Jesus, and like it happened in other times of the Old Testament, and also of the New Testament. We find that the questions they asked the Lord Jesus Christ, one, was for that century in which it would be fulfilled. And it was fulfilled in the year 70 of the Christian era. And the other two questions are relevant to the end time. 
to the end of the world or last day? Because the questions are, when shall these things be? Meaning the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Then when he answers them, he teaches all those signs, wars, deceivers, false prophets, false anointed ones, who will come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ from those times to our time, saying that they are the Christ, that is, that they are the anointed ones, that they are anointed with the Spirit of God, because what Christ means is anointed one. He says, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Notice, from those times to our time, we have been hearing about wars. We have been also he been hearing rumors that a war will unfold and so on. We also see neighboring nations about to go to war. Rumors of wars. But also wars like the First World War, the Second World War, and the rumors of a third world war that is approaching, which is impossible to stop. In due time, it will be fulfilled, for it is in the scripture. And it will be an atomic war. But don't worry, because the atomic bombs will straighten the Earth's tilt and that will prepare the Earth for the kingdom of the Messiah, the Millennial Kingdom. And we won't need air conditionings anymore because everything will work properly with a comfortable temperature in all parts of the planet. There will be a great change. And whenever there are changes or changes must be made, sometimes many people don't agree with the changes. But in this case, people's opinion does not count because it is a divine program and no one can tell God what he has to do. He has already had a program before the foundation of the world and it will be fulfilled. What's important is for us to know which is God's program or which part of God's program we are living in. Which are the promises that God has made for our time, for his church, and for each believer in Christ as an individual. Now he says that nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be pestilences such as diseases famines, earthquakes, earthquakes in diverse places. We have been seeing that for many years. And all these are the beginnings of sorrows. That is a sign. Birth pains because the earth is travailing in pain to give birth to a new earth for the kingdom of the Messiah. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. 
There we have the persecutions that Christians have been subjected to for the sake of the name of Jesus. And so have the Jews for the sake of the name of Jesus as well. For the death of Christ. They were persecuted on different occasions by nations, by Christianity, part of Christianity, which used nations to persecute Israel, reaching up until the Holocaust that Hitler carried out against the Jews. Now he says, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Every person must understand that God deals with individuals. That every person must work out their own salvation with fear and trembling. If someone turns away from the Lord, you continue persevering. You keep going forward persisting because you aren't going to stumble. You aren't going to let the fact that someone else has turned away from the Lord and lost the blessing of eternal life, you aren't going to want to lose the blessing of eternal life as well. You want to live eternally. Therefore, you continue enduring until the end, whether it be until the end of your days on earth or likewise until the end of the world or end of time, which pertains to the last day, to the seventh millennium from Adam to now or third millennium from Christ to now. That is the last day before God for one day before the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8, and Psalm 90, verse 4. When referring to the last day, some people think we have already reached or we are reaching the last days. Notice the last days began in the time when Jesus was three to seven years old. Because the last days before God are the last three millennia from Christ until now. Fifth millennium, sixth millennium, and seventh millennium. Just like the last days of the week are the fifth day of the week, which is Thursday, the sixth day of the week, which is Friday, and the seventh day of the week, which is Saturday, the last day of the week. Sunday is the first day of a new week that is beginning. Therefore, when the Scripture speaks to us about the last day, it's not a day of 24 hours, but rather a thousand years. For the last day, there are great promises from God, great blessings for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the believers in Christ as individuals, and for the Hebrew people as well. Christ also says, Christ also says, which are the signs there will be at that time. And we can't ignore the signs because the signs are the ones that indicate to us the time in which we're living. 
That is why the disciples ask him, And what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world or end of the age? Let's see in the scripture. St. Matthew chapter 13 verses 36 and on Matthew 13 verses 36 and on it says then Remember that the scripture says, verse 34, All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. In parables, there are many things which were kept a secret from the foundation of the world and were spoken in parables. If you understand those parables, you understand those things which were kept a secret since the foundation of the world. Now, let's see. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. The wheat, the children of the kingdom. Those are the ones who would receive Christ as their only and sufficient Savior. The ones who would form the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. Here Christ says that there are children of God and there are children of the wicked one. It's not the way some people think or say, everyone is a child of God. No, Christ doesn't say that. Christ says that there are children of the wicked one and there are children of God, children of the kingdom. The harvest is the end of the world. The end of the world, the harvest, the reaping. Reaping time is harvest time. And harvest time is in the summer. During harvest time, it is the summer stage or season. When Christ says in St. Matthew 24 that when we see all these things come to pass, summer is near. Therefore, since the reaping, the harvest, takes place in summertime, then the harvest, the reaping, is also about to be carried out. Therefore, the kingdom of God is near. And therefore, our redemption is near. St. Luke chapter 21 when we see these things come to pass, lift up your heads, for your redemption is near. The redemption of the body, which will be our transformation for us who are alive and for those who died, the resurrection in eternal bodies. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. The harvest is carried out by the angels. And now, let's see. He says, As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall be in the end of this world. 
so shall it be. And if he says that it will be that way, then the harvest will be carried out. A gathering of the wheat to be placed in the kingdom of God, in God's storehouse, and a gathering of the tares to be burned in the fire during the Great Tribulation. Now he says, So shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and all them which do iniquity. The angels are mentioned here again. Also in the same 13th chapter, verses 47 to 50, in the parable of the net, Christ says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which, when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. In other words, they will cast the wicked into the great tribulation, which is referred to as a furnace of fire. For oh, behold, the day comes that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that comes shall burn them up. In other words, they will be burned. Seth the Lord. Seth the the Lord of hosts, and it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Malachi chapter 1, verse 1, and chapter 4, verse 1. And the same fourth chapter, verse 2 says, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise, that is the second coming of Christ, with healing in his wings. It will be for salvation. It will be for the redemption of the body, the redemption, the adoption, the transformation, of the living in Christ and the resurrection of the dead in Christ in glorified bodies. Here we see what is promised for the end of the world, for the end time, for harvest time. That is what will be happening in the divine program. And now let's see what Christ said regarding the angels. Chapter 24, verse 31, St. Matthew, 30 to 31. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Here, Christ sends his angels. Christ sends his angels, his angels, to call his elect with a great sound of a trumpet. The elect of the Hebrew people are 144,000, 12,000 of each tribe, according to Revelation chapter 7 where the angel with the seal of the living God with the Holy Spirit appears to call and gather and seal 144,000 Hebrews, 12,000 of each tribe. The angels are the two olive trees, Moses and Elijah. The ministries of Moses and Elijah being manifested by the Holy Spirit to call and gather those elect of the Hebrew people who appear in chapter 7 of Revelation, and then they also appear in chapter 14 of Revelation. Those are signs. Therefore, God, at this end time, is going to call the Jews under the ministry of the two olive trees of Revelation chapter 11, verse 1 to 14, and 
chapter 11, verses 15 to 19, we find that the trumpet is sounded, that great trumpet. The two olive trees come with the trumpet, the great trumpet, calling and gathering 144,000, 12,000 of each tribe. When we see a ministry that draws the attention of Israel, remember what is here. That will be a ministry that will come with the great voice of trumpet of the gospel of the kingdom. With the great sound of a trumpet, the voice of God through the Holy Spirit, through that ministry, bringing the message that is relevant to the Jews. We can't explain too much about that to avoid the rise of imitations that could affect the Hebrew people. But be attentive because the ministry of the angels with the great voice of trumpet, the ministry of the two olive trees of Moses and Elijah will be repeating at this end time and Israel well here. And that will be a great sign because that will be the first time it will happen in the history of the Hebrew people. We are at the time in which we should have our eyes wide open we should know which are the promises of God for this end time for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and for the Hebrew people. And we should see what is happening in the midst of Christianity and what is happening in the midst of the Jews and in the midst of the other nations. For example, we can see what the scripture says about Israel. They have already been a free and sovereign nation for about 60 something years. That is a great sign, the fig tree budded. Christ says in St. Luke chapter 21, when you see the fig tree budding and the other trees, the other trees are the other nations, and mainly the nations of the Middle East. Lift up your heads, he also says, for your redemption draws near. When the trees bud and they bring forth fruit, in the spring, They have rightly called that whole movement that is taking place in the Middle East the Arab Spring. Israel already had its spring, its Jewish spring, and it budded. Now it is the other tree's turn. It is a sign that Christ gave for us to have our eyes wide open to what is happening in the Middle East and to take it to the scripture in order to understand what is happening in the Middle East in order to understand what is happening in the Middle East. And after the Arab Spring comes summer, it says, Luke 21, 29. And he spake to them a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own self that summer is now nigh at hand. Spring comes first when they bud and then they bear fruit. And then comes the harvest 
which is in the summer. So likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Know that the kingdom of the Messiah is at hand. Because the kingdom of God on earth is the kingdom of the Messiah, also called the kingdom of David, which will be restored, and the throne of David where the Messiah will sit, to which he is the heir. It is important to see these things. It says, And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Our transformation, the redemption of the body, the redemption of the body for all the believers in Christ of past ages and of our time, because the dead will resurrect in eternal bodies, and we who are alive will be transformed. That is why the church of the Lord Jesus Christ has been persevering, has been persisting since she was born on the day of Pentecost. And the members of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ of past times persevered, persisted in the time in which they were given to live until the end of their days on earth. And now, the church of the end time or the church of the Lord Jesus Christ at this end time has had to be persevering. She has had to be persisting because there is a goal. The adoption, the redemption of the body, our transformation. In order to be in the image and likeness of Christ with eternal, immortal, glorified, and young bodies throughout eternity. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is persevering. She has a goal. She is seeing the signs that Christ mentioned, which are the signs that indicate that we are at the end time or end of time or end of the world. In other words, when we say end of the world, we don't mean that it will be the end of planet Earth, but the end of the human systems, so that the program of God may then come through the Messiah, or let's say God's system, which will be implemented in the kingdom of the Messiah, where there will be a complete change in the life of the human family. And now the question is, as individuals, who is persevering until the end? I am persevering until the end, until I am transformed. At this end time, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and every believer have great promises of great blessings. And they also have great promises of signs that they will be seeing in the midst of Christianity. When the person perseveres, when the person persists, it's like when children start walking. The goal is for them to see themselves walking just like the rest of the people. But they only start out crawling and then they get up and fall down. But they are persevering, persisting to reach the goal of walking like the rest of the people, and they achieve it. They believe that they will walk. Whoever doesn't believe it, months pass by and years may pass by, he doesn't walk. 
until he loses his fear. And if he loses his fear, then he has faith that he can walk. Not having faith is having fear. Fear is thus the lack of faith. And now, a child that is starting to walk believes that he can reach the goal of walking because if his father, his mother, and his siblings achieved it, he can also achieve it. And he will try every day. He falls and he gets up. It's the same way with the one who persists, who perseveres until he reaches his goal. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ has great promises that she will be transformed as a mystical body and as individual, every believer in Christ. She also has a promise that she will have a great revival from God, a great blessing, and that the stage that Reverend William Branham called the third pole will emerge in the midst of Christianity, where God's presence will be in the midst of his church, and he will fill his church with love divine, and he will powerfully manifest himself in the midst of his church. And that third pole will be for the bride church of the Lord Jesus Christ, meaning the wise virgins who have the Holy Spirit, the oil in their lamps, in their lives. And it will also be for the foolish virgins, professing believers in Christ, but without the Holy Spirit. Therefore, they have not been born again. And also for the world. And therefore... Also for Israel, who will see that manifestation and will say, this is what we're waiting for. This is the one we're waiting for because they are waiting for God to manifest himself at the last day in the fulfillment of what has been promised to them. And... That third pole, Reverend William Branham says, it will be manifested in a great tent cathedral. Therefore, when that tent vision is seen being fulfilled, it will be the greatest sign for Christianity, for the wise virgins, for the foolish virgins, for the world, for the Jews, and for all of mankind. That will be a sign like Noah's Ark was. But it won't be Noah's Ark. But it will be a sign like the construction of Noah's Ark. Christ rightly stated that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the day that the Son of Man will reveal himself, manifest himself. Therefore, just like in Noah's time, there were people working with Noah in the construction of the ark, there will also be people who believe in that vision that was shown to Reverend William Branham working for the fulfillment of the tenth vision. They will be blessed people with prophetic insight to crystallize what was seen and made known to be happening in the midst of Christianity. That is where the third pull will be seen manifested. That is where the thunders will be uttering their voices, where what the thunders spoke will be known. That is where God 
will be revealing the mystery of the seventh seal. In other words, the mystery of the coming of the Son of Man at the last day. The mystery of the coming of the Lord to His church. Therefore, at this end time, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ will be on that path. Working for the crystallization or materialization of that vision. There is no hope for mankind except for the coming of the Lord. There is no other hope for mankind. There is no other hope for the resurrection of the dead in Christ. There is no other hope for the living to be transformed. There is no other hope for the rapture or catching away of the church to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. There is only one hope, and it is the second coming of the Lord, the coming of the Lord to His church. And that is appointed to be at the end of the world, where we will be seeing the ministries of the angels of the Son of Man, the ministries of Moses and Elijah sounding the great voice of trumpet, or last trumpet, God's last message, the message of the gospel of the kingdom, to call and gather 144,000 Hebrews, 12,000 of each tribe. In other words, that last trumpet has to do with the Hebrew people, calling them and gathering them. And it has to do with the believers in Christ being gathered at this end time, gathered to be transformed and taken with Christ to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Because Paul says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed at the last trumpet. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ will be raised incorruptible, and we who are alive will be changed. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 50 to 58. That's the hope there is for the believers in Christ, and that is the goal, the transformation that He has promised for the living and the resurrection for the dead in Christ at the last day, at the end of the world or end of time. Christ has been, is, and always will be with the believers in Him. He said, I am with you always, even until the end of the world or end of time. Therefore, Christ is with us like He was in the time of the Apostles, like He was in the time of the different messengers, like He was in the time of Reverend William Branham. He is also with us at this end time. And therefore, the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ will be working for the crystallization of everything that has been promised for the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the ones He has to be used by Him are the believers in Him. Just as God used Jesus to carry out the relevant work of that time, Christ has been using His Church since the day of Pentecost until now. Because God's partners in His program are the believers in Christ. Those are the partners of Christ in the work that He has been carrying out. Persevering until the end. Until the end of the world, until the end of time, until the end of the world. Meaning, the end of the human systems and the end of all things. Therefore, by continuing 
to hold on to Christ, we will achieve the goal that God has shown, which we can reach. The redemption of the body, in other words, our transformation, if we remain alive, and if someone goes on before, well, he will resurrect in a glorified body. But we wish to be alive so that no one cries for us, but rather to be transformed and see how we are changed in our atoms from mortal to immortal, which was shown and typified when God appeared to Abraham and Sarah. Abraham was 99 years old and Sarah was 89 years old. And he tells him, next year you will have a child. Which is why they had to be rejuvenated so that they could have the promised son, Isaac, a type and figure of the transformation that is coming for the believers in Christ at the last day. So, let's continue persevering until the end. We are going to reach the goal. We are going to reach what God has promised, the blessing of the redemption of the body, the glorification promised, for all the believers in Christ. Everyone continue having a happy afternoon filled with the blessings of Christ our Savior.